The future is here. An innovation that will change the way the industry works. A Hot 100 chart. Updated daily. The most accurate price guide on the market. Every card has its own profile with a wealth of information. Know the precise, real-time value of any card in the system. On demand. You now have the power to unlock the secrets of the hobby. The Game Changer is here. Card Ladder. Oof. Nice one. It's just that kind of day. Yes, sir. I have a couple of mail days I forgot about. I'll do those first. Yeah, let's do those. Let's get this out of here. Let's focus on the mail days. Right. Dude, check out this one I got, though. <laughs> Guy on Facebook had this for 300 bucks, and I was like, dude, one PSA 10 is like 150 bucks. What's up, Christina from the other room? Dude, it's like, that's a hell of a lot right there. If these, you know, if a lot of these get tens, like, I'm gonna make a decent amount of money. Yes, I cannot disagree with that. What was the guy thinking when he was selling them? I'm not sure. He just like, and they all came in really nice top loaders individually. Brand new top loaders, brand new sleeves. I was like, dude, this is a lot just waiting to be created and, and flipped. Oof. Okay, big meal days though. I got PSA order back. What's up, Kelvin? Oh, congrats! Congrats! Look at that. These are hard to grade because of the centering. Yes, they are. So was that year of basketball. Yep. What's up? Then... What up? Rodman, don't worry, it's coming back. <laughs> PSA 10 gold. This one's nice. Dude, that, that gold is absolutely gorgeous. All right, big one. Woo! Oh, my God. Look at that, baby. When did you become a football guy? I don't know, man. It happened. Yeah, I did it last year, too. You know what you're doing. That card is ridiculous. This is like the nicest patch in the whole set. Look at that thing. Good. These are tough to nine five too. Man. Yeah, I feel like the Lamar, Lamar Jackson stuff is kind of cheap compared to like Mahomes has been going crazy and Jackson won the MVP, so I figure it's pretty decent. Oh, I love it. And the biggest one. Boom. Boom. Back. BGS 9. This thing is so sick. How do you even get a 9 on that? That's not even... That's not fair. 9 auto. Look at that but, olive foil, man. That card just pops. What's up, yeah. Riverfront? What's up, David? What's up, Lucky? All right. David, check this out. Oh, you saw this one already. All right. Let me get my little, my little guy going here. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday night. It's been another great week in the hobby, I'd say. Welcome to the crossover. Yes. That's what we're going to call it now. Okay. So this video is also going to be uploaded to the House of Jordan's YouTube channel. So greetings to everybody who's tuning in through that medium. Um, I collected a bunch of topic suggestions from people today. Thank you to everybody who sent some in. We've got five different clusters. I don't know if we'll have time to get to them all, but let's go. Topic cluster number one is card ladder. And yes. yup, it's me, 131, uh, said card ladder for a suggested 
topic and Shea Wave Vlogs said, when is Card Ladder having an IPO? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if we're, that, if we're ready for that. <laughs> Maybe not quite yet. Maybe explain Card Ladder for people that are on, no, that aren't sure yet. Oh, how do you explain Card Ladder? Well, we have a three and a half minute video on cardladder.com that you can go watch. It describes some of the stuff that it does. Um, I like to think of it as a way of telling the story of the hobby through data. And so we've got features like basically a billboard hot 100 for cards, um, which, you know, uses a proprietary algorithm to rank the performance of cards. And the results are always interesting. They always change every day. It's a lot of fun to watch. We've got a compare tool that does just what its name says. You can compare cards. You can spot trends. You know, um, one friend of ours, uh, 23 over ELO, pointed out to me um, that he, he was showing me a comparison. He said, look up three cards, the Luca Courtside Silver PSA 10 rookie, the Luca Optic Hollow PSA 10 rookie, and the Luca Prism Silver PSA 10 rookie, and watch what it does on the compare graph. Sure enough, all those cards were selling for the same price in early December. And now the Quartzite Silver is 2 to 3x um, those other cards. And so his point was rarity matters quite a bit. And, you know, that's some of the stuff you can do with a compare tool like that is you can kind of spot, you know, stuff that you, know, you can use past trends to predict uh, future performance. So that's cool. We've got, I mean, dude, there's so many features. Like maybe the most exciting feature is the My Collection tool, um, which allows you to add cards to your collection and then see a whole bunch of information about the card, see its, its sales history, information about the card, a nice picture of the card. Um, I don't want to spoil too much of the functionality of that, but it's really exciting. You know, and the pro there's a lot more. We won't go into too much now because people will find out soon enough, but um I'm so excited for this thing, man. Like, it's hard to contain myself. I don't know. Did I miss anything? How'd I do? Good. I mean, I think people want to know more about, like, the my collection. And, you know, we're currently working on some stuff to let you track your own cards that are in the ladder. So that's that's coming. That is coming indeed. June 23rd, 2020. All right. Uh, you know, anybody in the chat, if you want to ask anything, I mean, I've been responding to hundreds of people this week and it's been amazing. But if there's anybody who wants to throw a question, you got a quick window of time here to do it. Cardladder.com, June 23rd, 2020 is the date to look out for. All right. I'm going to move on to the next cluster of topics. Um, the oh, monthly rate or not. Um, you know, we're still working that out. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for how that's going to work out. Okay. Cluster number two, national tra – oh, and one more. From Exquisite Collector, the, the great Exquisite Collector, he says, will we be able to see each other's personal collections in Card Ladder? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, to start, no. We need to work through some of the privacy issues that come up with that. <laughs> We need to make sure we have our ducks in a row before we let something like that happen because there are some privacy concerns. There may be a future where you can mark a card as like available or like you know you're you're basically giving permission for other people to look at it. We may look into something like that if we get into like a buy sell trade platform. But as of now, that is not in the plans. Uh, California card collector says, "Will it have raw and graded data?" And the answer to that is yes, but um, especially in the early goings, we're focused on the most relevant cards. And that's a lot of cards. <laughs> the database is, is pretty strong and it's swelling and it's growing, you know, by the day here. But, um, you know, there are raw cards in there. There's graded cards and a variety of grades in there. There's vintage in there. There's modern in there. There's 90s in there. Everything. Yeah, we added SG six point SGC six point five today. If that's any indicator of how in depth we're getting, <laughs> Rock Nation card says so. No Jay Z. Um, Maybe you know, like we we don't really know where this is going in terms of like the diversity and the variety of the cards. So we're not going to say no for sure. Like it's not there now, you know, because we're trying to 
focus on the sports car and get most the most important stuff in there. But who's to say that we won't do it eventually? I don't see why not. Uh, you know, especially if it's an interesting card and um, it's got a it's got some market data to look at that makes it more interesting. What's up, merge with George? Okay, all right. Enough enough card letter questions for now. Topic number two is national treasures. And mm-hmm. C Rhymes twenty three says Zion National Treasure Treasures. What else? Duh. Uh, Levi says National Treasures exclamation mark. And Frankie thirty five hundred says the Zion Logo Man bounty prizes and the possible hobby impact if it does get purchased at those prices. I think the biggest bounty that I've seen somebody put out was 550000 by a Instagram user, and blowouts is half a million. I saw a 600000 on Facebook. I, I don't know how serious it was, but I saw 600 Well, what do we think? The bounty? Yeah. Uh, it seems kind of silly. This... It's it's like I get those guys would probably pay that and they're and they're probably very serious so I I get that part the silliness is kind of like the one upping every hour kind of thing so it's gonna get to a point where someone's like I'll give you a million and like who's who's joking and who's serious now I guess sports appraisal says that's a three quarter of a million card well but I don't know maybe either the comma was misplaced or he left off a zero maybe maybe he meant to say seven he must have meant three quarter of a million seven hundred fifty thousand. Um, you know, somebody mentioned to me that when you see a site like Blowout or, you know, a, a, a massive dealer uh, advertising a rate like that, it obviously creates a hype around the product and it makes people want to buy the product because you've got, you know, infinitesimal odds, but nonetheless odds that you could possibly hit a half a million dollar card that Blowout will buy from you. So it definitely makes the product a bit more enticing for the gamblers, our gambling friends out there. Sports appraisals clarifies three quarter of a, of a million. So uh, David says Julius Randall bounties out here in these. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty interesting call. <laughs> I mean, That's like, it's this floor, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I think it's the floor. Um, I dude, I think Zion's going to be a thirty points per game guy next year, healthy, and uh, the Pelicans are going to be exciting. And I see the logic behind why you know people want to do that but so like i was look i was on dave and adams national treasures hobby boxes are 4500 for this year and last year's are five grand so mm. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how these national treasures rpa prices are matching up because there's zion the first zion nt uh out of 99 true rpa uh is already at eighty thousand on bids. Yeah. Um, that seems fake there's so many bids on it there's like 100 bids <laughs> It seems it seems fake. I yeah, I'm I would have a tough time reconciling that with like where, you know, his comp for better or worse, fair or not fair, has pretty much been Luca all season, you know, where Luca prices are at Zions and pretty much match no matter what the product was. And uh Luca's NTRPA is is half of that value right now, roughly. Yeah. 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 It's way too high. It's it's pretty high. Um, we've seen some results of, of oh, Neaton says it's legit. Uh, we we've seen some results of uh, of breaks. Oh, Neaton needs to sell his Neaton. You got a you got an NTRPA of Zion. Congratulations, man. Congrats, dude. So, yeah, we've seen uh, you know. MC Collection made a, a great post. He compared the output of his National Treasures case with his uh, Mosaic case. <laughs> that the Mosaic case did better. Uh, I wish we would do that. You know, show the the losses because I think it's it's better for the hobby as a whole to see that it's not realistic to pull a Zion RPA in every box. You know, like sometimes you just gotta take a bath. <laughs> well, people are going to be real clean after a week of National Treasures baths. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. It is – I, I got to admit, it's it's very entertaining watching the product get ripped. I mean, I go on YouTube. 
I see breakers have streams with 400 people watching and they're just breaking national treasures basketball and it's exciting. And, you know, there's even a little bit of voyeurism involved when you see people just get crushed and, you know, the best hit is an off brand rookie RPA, but um, you know, it's got to feel pretty great to hit that Zion. Got to, got to say that. So let's see, watch any break and you can see that. Uh, JP says, how do you go here on live to discuss Zion and not know that Neaton hit one? I don't know, man. I don't know how we could do that. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Mr. September says a friend of mine hit the Moran's RPA. I wonder what that's going to sell for. I, I mean, that, that will probably be in line with trade prices. Maybe, maybe it'll outpace it a little bit. I don't know. Be like 15 to 20 or something like that. Right. Or is that too high? Sounds about right to me. Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah, it is, but everything's expensive right now. Okay, so uh, Chase says, with so much capital being invested in Zion, what impact do you think a Derrick Rose situation would have on the hobby as a lot would be lost more than any other player in history? There's a lot to say about that. Dang. It would be devastating. So much money pouring into these products just for Zion. It would be horrible. I think the whole hobby's rooting for Zion to not get hurt because of that. I know I am. I wouldn't want to see him get hurt. <clears throat> no. Um, the whole hobby was holding its breath in his first game back, too, I remember. And the first three quarters went by, and he was on a minutes restriction. It was very uneventful. And I think everyone was super nervous. I was nervous. And then he hit four three-pointers in a row in the fourth quarter, and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. And then it turned out that he is matching the hype, I think. Um, see, the thing is, you know, we've got rookie classes from the last two years that are definitely like directly responsible for bringing so many people into the hobby, especially this year's rookie class. When you talk about domestic collectors and last year's rookie class was big, bringing in international collectors. And that's how it goes. Like I was talking to Coleman the other day and he was explaining to me like he came back to the hobby three different times. Like, well, he started like getting interested in 96 because of Kobe and that rookie class and Nash and everybody, he left the hobby. He came back in 03. The LeBron rookie class got back involved. He got back involved again with the Harden and Curry rookie class. And then um, once more, he got sucked in for Luca's rookie class. Yeah, so these, these rookie classes matter a lot. And yes. if, the, if, the, if, the st if the light starts dimming for these guys, you know, not good. Not good at all. Uh, Ross says, don't forget 1718, which is a deep class. And he's right. That class is panning out pretty well. Mitchell, Tatum, etc. cetera. Uh, Neaton says he would have taken a complete bath on his case if he did not hit the Zion RPA. Uh, David says, this class is so bad compared to last year. Like DeAndre Hunter and Rui are bringing huge dollars. What the? Fair point. They are pretty top heavy this year, but top heavy is what the hobby wants, anyways. You know, like it's top heavy with Braun and Jordan and Kobe. It's pretty like exponential in that regard. So I think it only needs like one or two guys to carry it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. Next topic autographs. Uh, Cards and Coffee says the unforgivable crime that is the use of blue ink for autos. And we have two what? blue inks on display here. I don't think I don't think Josh is gonna agree with that one. What? Uh the black looks terrible on cards. I've always have you seen that uh, and I was pointed out in one of my interviews that Ray Allen signs with black and all of his exquisite product, and it's like the only player that signs in black. I think it looks terrible. It's so weird. The blue is uh, it's a lot brighter, obviously. You know, so it's, it's a lot brighter color than the black, and it has like a better contrast against the rest of the card, so it stands out. Blue is like it's a weird. I've never heard of anyone that doesn't like the blue. Yeah, the chat agrees. The chat loves blue as well. So cards and coffee you may have been outvoted on this one. I and Wade Zoe says. This year's rookie class has the worst ever autographs. And I have a comment <laughs> on that. 
I look at those LeBron autographs, like especially the card on the right. Like that autograph is gorgeous. It's it's it embellishes the card. It makes or yeah. breaks the card. Even if you know if it, if that was just like four letters, Lulu, you know, like it wouldn't pop like it the way it pops because it has that that beautiful autograph on it. I've seen I've seen some of the RPAs. Uh, come out early from NT, obviously, and some of the autos are brutal, man. Like, they're barely scribbling one letter on there. I know. Like, <laughs> Christian Cards posted a, a good meme. Um, it, it was a personalized Rui, one of one from NT this year, and, like, his his signature already is, like, one letter. Yeah. His personalization was, like, another letter, and I don't know what it was supposed to be. But this is this is it's not just this year's class. You can look at Mo Wagner's autograph. It's horrific. Somebody said Cam Reddish. I think that's right too. Why can't they sign better for NT? Knowing that this is like the flagship product, I don't understand. I guess like you know those guys don't really care that much about the cards on a lot of levels. But you would think that Panini would be like, hey guys, like I know you've been signed this way, but for this, like please, this is the only one that matters. There's not that many of them. This is like the low the smallest shipment we're going to send you please do like a full autograph <laughs> rd number says uh rj barrett is awful i mean dude it's like admiral schofield is like the only guy i think who actually has like a nice looking auto this year um oh this is interesting uh jjj gambino says riddle me this would lebron be as big in the hobby if his auto looked like Rui's, a subpar check mark. Uh, I think it'd still be big, but I think it'd be a big dip. I think, uh, uh, yeah, but I think that's what makes MJ and LeBron so ahead of everyone else and ahead of their time is that those guys see the value in something like this and they know that it's like part of their legacy. So to sign autographs like they do here, and MJ has one of the best autos ever, and. I think those guys are just like thinking ahead more than the, than some of these other guys. They're they're recognizing that this is important to their legacy. It's it, dude. It really is. And you know, LeBron. I love the way he worked in. Also, oh, look, you you have a Jordan and a LeBron autograph on display conveniently, and it, both autographs are beautiful. I I really like how LeBron worked the number twenty three into his. I think that definitely indicates a lot of forethought um into making a memorable signature and you know obviously jordan's is refined after years he's actually changed his autograph a few times and each time it was very deliberate and a great looking autograph it enhances a card it you know speaks to the the carefulness and the consideration of the player um but you know i don't want to hold it too much against the modern guys because it's it's trendy now you know for them to just be like well you know we get paid to sign stuff and you know, or we're get, we have so many fans, like, let's just, you know, just come up with a little four letter thing. Like Luca's autograph, dude, it's it's just two letters repeated. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's just not, it's just not cutting it. Um, uh, and like Zion, you know, Zion has five letters. He has Zion W. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's kind of a turnoff to me. I don't collect, we, we have, Christine and I have one Luca autograph card, pack pulled card, and we have one in-person autograph. That's it, because I don't really love the way his auto looks. No. Plus, you know, there's that whole rumor about him, his mom signing him, so. You know, you would think his mother, at least, would have taken the time to, uh, you know, spell out. His mother would have taken the time, at least, to spell out uh, the full name, you know, and. Uh, if she's gonna be the one taking the time to to write it, she would have immediately at least made it look, you know, somewhat uh, full full name. But I guess even the moms these days are cutting corners on the autos. Uh, okay, topic number four is products. Uh, Lingua Sports Cards says, "Do you have any thoughts on Panini Flawless? How can the brand be improved?" Flawless came with all the hype in the world in 2012-13, but seems to be completely overshadowed now by National Treasures. Yeah. I mean, my, I don't really know much about that product, to be honest. I don't know a lot about a lot of the Panini products, so I'll just give my quick blurb. Uh, I think 
they just kind of blend together at a certain point and people just want to pick one of them. The opposite of that seems to be happening with Optic and Select. So I could be put, put my foot in my mouth on that one. But, you know, uh, National Treasures, Flawless, Immaculate, they all kind of like do similar things and they all have the same kind of white background look. So maybe people are just like, well, if I'm going to put money in this stuff, I might as well just pick one. Yeah, I think that's right. And, you know, belief systems are the most powerful things in the world. What we, you know, if, if, if a belief system can take root and we all agree collectively to believe something or to agree on something, that can be very, very powerful. And this entire hobby is predicated on belief systems. We all need to believe collectively that these cards are valuable, that we want them, that they're desirable. And then it builds up an inertia of its own. And that's, that's the way sets work too. Um, we all agree. We all believe that one set versus another is the go-to set. And sometimes that can trump even aesthetics. It can trump price points. It can trump rarity. It can trump scarcity. It can trump everything. Um, if, if something sort of gets traction and we develop a belief system that one product is the go-to product or it's the most important product, and National Treasures definitely has a stranglehold on the high-end market for what the true RPA is. It just, that's, that's what we've collectively decided as a group. But the interesting thing about belief systems is that even though they're very rigid at times, they can also be changed. And so pe we do see people shift interest or discover new things or place a new premium on things. We saw Optic and Select really ascend uh, during the course of this season. And really at the end of last season, starting with the LeBron Optic Hollow. So things can change as well. Um, but the question of like, what could, how could the brand be improved? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think the cars are pretty beautiful as is. I love the Star Swatch signatures, especially. I think those cars are absolutely gorgeous. Big fat patch, super rare, beautiful cards. Um, it, it just, it more requires us as a community to change our taste or our belief system somehow. And that is a lot easier said than done. Yes. I'm, I just don't know the water product like you do, man. We'll let you take the product stuff. Well, there's one more product question. This one from Shea Wave Vlogs. He says, best bang for the buck, 2019-20 wax to rip and to invest. And I'm gonna go with um, hoops which we, re, uh, we ripped recently. Hoops is a throwback to the 90s. Best one or one of the best ones that Panini has ever done. They have lots of beautiful inserts in Hoops this year, and those inserts have caught fire. High Voltage is a beautiful insert set. Uh, NBA City is a personal favorite of mine. I love the hollows to NBA City. Um, you've got uh, Zero Gravity. Those are beautiful. And the LeBron in that set stunning Dang. i don't know all three of those are hoops that's cool yeah they nailed it dude hoops is solid this year so i that's my bang for the buck is hoops so hobby box is like 300 bucks they're getting there i think they're about 220 right now yeah dude like what like honestly like what is what are kids supposed to buy is there anything other than like walmart blaster crap dude. where you just can't get any good cards Kids can't buy Walmart blaster crap, man, because a lot of the times it doesn't even hit the shelves because of the arbitrage opportunities to get that product and sell it on eBay immediately for like 4X what it what the suggested retail price is. So, you know, there's some some stuff going on where, you know, people report the product never even hit the shelves at Walmart and Target, and I believe it, and I it makes sense. I understand how that could happen. And if anything ever is left on the shelves, you know, it's – it's there for minutes until, you know, people follow around the stock, the, the restockers and just wait and try to time the schedule so that they can figure out when basketball product is going to hit the shelves and they just go buy it all. So uh, there's just nothing for kids. Like, uh, you know, it, it's just, you got to go to a hobby shop and, um, you know, going to the hobby shop is a blast, but then, you know, everything on the shelf is so expensive. That's yeah. good. Kids are the kids are the future of the hobby. We can't like have it die with us. That I don't like that. We got to fix that. I know. I mean, you got to mow a lot of lawns to rip a box of hoops. That sucks. 
Mr. September said Revolution. I love Revolution. That's a great product, but that's pretty expensive too now, I'm guessing. Oh, shoot. Yes, Revolution is a sweet product. Oh, I, my, my chat froze for a second. Uh, some guys go to the managers of Walmart. Come on, guys. Seriously? Let these kids have some of this stuff. Like, go buy singles on eBay. Golly. People are, like, following around Walmart employees to get waxed to flip. Like, what the heck? Dude, it's kind of a bad thing. It's, it is bad. And, and it sends a bad signal to Panini because it tells Panini they need to make more and more and more and and the thing is it's not getting ripped you know boxes are bought and then they're flipped and then they're flipped again and they're held and they sit on shelves and so we have a really weird situation where the boxes themselves are being speculated on and so someone pointed out so they can collect football i know football is a lot cheaper when i uh I, I don't rip wax very often but i had some buddies over and we wanted to rip wax we bought 20 uh, 19 optic football and that was a lot of fun it wasn't cheap but it was definitely a lot cheaper than basketball so that was kind of a fun rack. football is definitely a good call out if you're looking for something cheaper absolutely Fo and dude football is going to be incredible this year you got a stacked rookie class coming you got all these young quarterback studs you know it's, yep. it, it's, it's an interesting parallel to basketball because you got some you got two goats you got lebron and brady um, and I think LeBron still is like much more at the peak of his powers than Brady is. But you got two active goats um, coming out in really cool sets, and then you've got super, super potential-filled rookie classes, and you know, second and third year, fourth year stars. And you know, it's it's a great, great time to to rip some product if you can get it. Yeah. Mr. September says Tua will be the guy, dude. Tua is incredible. Tua is going to be awesome. Uh, you know, but you just run down, you know, Burroughs is going to be incredible. Then you got, you know, all the act, the guys who are getting, you know, more experience on their belt, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, dude, Patrick Mahomes, is insane, insanely good. You got Kyler Murray did exactly very Lamar. exciting time. It's loaded. There's lots of good quarterbacks. Every team has a, a pretty decent quarterback. Obviously there's some that have bad quarterbacks, but everyone's got at least somebody they're semi excited about. That's, that's the league is quarterbacks, and they hold the, they're keeping the value of football cards up. So it's kind of nice to see that all teams have something decent. They do, they do. Josh Allen, uh, kiss my razzes. Burrow is in a horrible situation, dude. He is. Yeah. He is Baker Mayfield? Yeah, Baker's another guy who. Uh, I don't know, man. The jury's still out. Uh, so I want to revisit this comment because we didn't touch on this uh witty card collection says this we did touch this topic but i like what the point he makes he's i just chimed in and i hope you guys haven't discussed this but if the zion national treasure rpa goes for over one hundred thousand, the big if what does it do to curry Kawhi, Giannis, nt rpas that's a good point because like that's definitely the way the hobby works is one guy comes in and sets the benchmark and then the rest of the hobby follows and it's not just the big names that are the beneficiaries of that when prices get high, a certain subset of people say, okay, I'm priced out of this market. Who's the next best guy I can get and I can start building a collection around or I can start flipping their cards. And, dude, I'm looking at the card ladder right now, and Steve Nash is, it has a card in the top 20. Steve Nash. What? Nice. But really? People are looking to, you know, uh, peripheral stars and ter even tertiary stars that they can get involved with. So it trickles all the way down. We got two shout outs to Russell Wilson. Dude, Russell Wilson is super underrated. Super underrated. He's like crazy consistent stats, proven winner, clutch. Yeah, it's great. Super, super underrated. Dude, uh, what a great time to get. Dude, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely ripping some football this year. My brother got me into football uh, product a little bit. He rips anything, dude. He'll go to Walmart. <laughs> If they if it's score football, he'll buy it all. If it's he bought like a, a two thousand, he he said he, there was like a two thousand six like chrome hanger pack that he found at a Walmart with a clearance sticker on it. And he bought that. Yeah. So, Russell MVP this year. California nice. card collector says I bought so much Russell Westbrook. Um, Kiss my Raz says Don, uh, Donovan and Tatum are on their eyes. Yes, they are. Yes. <laughs> Yes, indeed, they are. 
uh, Northeast says, it doesn't make sense that Zion is half the value of a LeBron RPA, and he hasn't even played half a season yet. Fair, yeah. fair point. We should, probably, we should probably wait for a couple of those Zion RPAs to sell before we start, like, talking about that it's worth 100 you know? Like, I want to see four or five of them sell first. That's fair, and I would also say a LeBron RPA is way more than 200 so if it even if it does sell at 100, but that's not half a LeBron RPA anymore. Uh, Philly Carcos says, I wish Nash would sign a damn card. Still waiting on a redemption quad. Kobe Iverson, Nash, and Ray Allen is just waiting on Nash. Dear God. <laughs> Tweet him. Tweet Steve Nash. He's active on Twitter. Tweet him. Tell him to sign his cards. David says, Drew Locke. Uh, yeah. For sure, that's interesting. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, Bam Sports versus how do you feel about Vegas Dave pumping <laughs> Derek Carr? Uh, he's doing it so he can dump it because he bought a lot of it at peak when Derek Carr was hot a couple years ago, and now he's trying to dump it because he's got a ton of it. It's so obvious. <laughs> Please don't buy Derek Carr, he <laughs> might not even start, <laughs> dude. But Vegas Dave guaranteed they were going to win a Super Bowl, I think, like, what, in the next two years, I think he said? It's based on what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's... Man, I'd say anything to dump a card, I guess, you know? The Raiders are going to win the championship. <laughs> okay. We're just making stuff up now. We just say whatever we want. Yeah, well, I mean, I, okay, so he's excited because the Raiders are coming to Vegas, right? Like, that's the thing. So he's excited. And, uh, you know, he's obviously got a bunch of car cards and, you know, car cards are hot right now. <laughs> car cards are going up right now. The Derek, car, the Derek Carr card prices jumped and I saw that, but everyone, it jumped because people were buying it, uh, hoping they could flip it for more to the next person that's going to buy it because Vegas Dave said to buy it. People are just buying it upward to try to, Pump and dump with Vegas Dave. Nobody actually wants Derek Carr right now. Yeah, it's uh, here's a, here's a way to spin it. It's a testament to the power of the hobby to make its own narrative, even if it's completely devoid of what's happening in the real world. Yeah. Yes. I won't, touch, I won't be touching any of that. So someone MJ twenty three KB twenty four basketball cards. He can confirm a sale fifty to seventy. You can confirm it, but you don't know the price. That seems odd. 50 to 70 is a huge range, dude. Huge range. I I think 50 is definitely within the realm of possible. Um, yeah, I can see 50. Doobie Collect says, do you think all this demand will trickle over into hockey cards in hockey. the near future? Uh, I love that question because the answer is it already has. Um, I can tell you that the, the number seven card on the ladder right now is Mario Lemieux. And he just, his rookie PSA 10 just did $20,000. That's the OPG, right? Yes. The, those OPG ones and PSA 10 are like really, really tough. They They're are like super low pop. I think the Gretzky is like one of the most expensive cards, not, not just hockey. The Gretzky PSA 10 OPG is super expensive because there's just not a lot of them. 100 percent 100 percent the whole hobby is on the rise guys you you have to understand this everything is going crazy right now um you know it feels like you know we all any one of us can only see so much um we all have a lot of hobby blind spots but when you look at like the holistic approach at the hobby uh, which is what we're trying to provide among other things with card ladder you take a holistic approach to the hobby and you start to see that like, it's not just basketball. It's not just LeBron. It's not just Jordan. It's not just Kobe. It's not just Lucas. It's not just Zion. It's not just Tatum. It's not just Mitchell. <laughs> okay. Speaking of RPAs, it's not just any of those guys. It is the whole hobby is on fire right now. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's exciting. I think. You know, I, I like I kind of like hearing from you that it's the whole hobby and it's not just like P 
people cornering a market on one player or trying to pump and dump somebody. It's just like people are just on fire for all of it, you know, everything they can get their hands on and exciting. Uh, Neaton says, I can confirm I got three offers of over 60000 for a Zion NTRPA. Congratulations, man. That's a much more credible source now. Uh, Kaushik says, someone just closed on Platinum Card Breaks chat at 75000 for hey. a Zion NTRPA. His sports appraisal said he saw that. Uh, Cardfiend says, "No, you're right, Eddie. I have seen a sale today for fifty-five thousand, seventy-five thousand. Let him." Uh, Rock Nation card says, "Jay Z is up too." <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about the zag of all zags? What about that Eminem rookie card, man? Maybe that's a sleeper, right there. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing trickle even to stuff like that. You know, like. People are looking for all kinds of stuff. Maybe it trickles over to, like, movie cards. I've seen a lot of people have, like, autographs of people from Game of Thrones and stuff like that. You never know. Why not? Why not? We are in the era of collectibles. We are in the era of $100,000 tickets to watch football for three hours at the Super Bowl. We are in the era of Michael Jordan love letters selling for $25,000 at auction. Why not? Why not? interesting comments in the chat here guys i lots of good stuff coming here um doobie says i'm still waiting for ben simmons value to jump i think he's overlooked and undervalued let me give a comment on that real quick ben simmons looked very spry in the all-star game this year and that's like a weird thing to say because nobody really tries an all-star game whatever but like i was impressed because number one anybody who actually tries hard in the all-star game catches my attention because it's like, why are you trying hard? Do you have a chip on your shoulder? What's going on here? I like that. I like that aggression that he brought. The guy is so athletic. He's extremely team-oriented. He's a hell of a defender. A hell of a defender. He's got size. He's got a really interesting kind of weird team constructed around him that maybe kind of doesn't work with him perfectly. But guys, in my humble opinion, we need to see Ben Simmons not just on YouTube film from, you know, uh, high school gym games in over the summer. We need to see him in NBA games start shooting the ball. He has a nice-looking shot. It's gotten better. Why doesn't he shoot the ball? If you got a guy who's a wing who you can leave wide open at the three-point line during the playoffs, he's not going to shoot, that is tough. That is tough. All right, what do you think about Ben Simmons, Josh? Same thing. I think he's got it all. Just he, ha he has to shoot the ball. It's not like a if. It's not like a if. Like he has to do it. And I don't know what's taking him so long. It's obviously confidence, because you know we're seeing him stroke it yeah, in practice and at you know in the gym. So I don't, I don't know why he's not doing it. Uh, you know maybe coaching is telling him not to do it, or maybe I don't know. I, I've been I've heard that coaching wants him to shoot and he's not doing it. So I don't know. I'd, I'd be nervous until he shoots. I I would stay away. Frankie says, get a Ric Flair auto. Wrestling. Um, wrestling, for sure. Um, oh, I saw another interesting one. Jim City Sports Car says, I know of a Zion National Treasure sale today that blows all of these out of the water. It's also, like, people are just, they want to be the guy that paid the most, it sounds like. You know, like, I'm the one that paid 90 grand for a Zion RPA. It's <laughs> insane. Well, that has that has become a part of the hobby, hasn't it? Especially through Instagram and social media is, you know, and hell, we're doing it right now, too. Um, you get a nice card. You want to show it off. And Luca RPAs right now. Exactly. Exactly. Midwest Vintage Cards says Yoda rookie. OK, now that is a zag. Jensen. That is a zag. He's going to see if he can share what he paid. Okay. Uh, we got some comments on uh, Ben Simmons not having a jump shot. Yes, indeed. Jordan Hagdorn sends a shout-out to Card Ladder. Much love, boys. Thank you, Jordan. Shout-out to For the Hobby as well. Uh, oh, Stacks of Wax KC says, Hello, I'm the idiot who overpaid. 
what can you tell us, our friend? Uh, we, 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 we reserve judgment. Anybody buying sports cards, you know, we're all idiots together. Josh has flipped the script. Now, you know, from the highest of the high end to the humble but, you know, surging base mania right now. These cards are like 20, 30 bucks each here, guys. Base cards are the thing right now. Yeah, the Simmons pop is a very interesting point. I'm glad he brought that up. The pop count of PSA 10 Prism Silver Simmons is only 129, and Luca is going strong way over 1,000. Very interesting point. Uh, 2016 was actually the year that started the pop with Prism Silvers. Simmons kind of ushered that in. I remember when I was collecting in 2016, 2017, watching the Simmons Silver's just jump in price and people were going crazy buying those and they were excited to have like a new top screen card and it was really starting to take off. And it's interesting that that was kind of like the last year that they kept the print runs uh, semi-low and now they've, they've gone insane. So it's kind of interesting to see how low his is compared to some of these other guys. Well, dude, the deck has been shuffled for this year's playoffs and nobody knows what's going to happen. And it could be you, we could we could see the 76ers, you know, they they got cold. They had to deal with some injuries towards the end of the season. People are healed. Uh, people are healthy. You know, dude, who knows? The 70, I wouldn't I wouldn't rule the 76ers out of any playoff series in the East. I'll say yeah. that. they've got the top end talent to, you know, win some close games and eke out a tough game series. They almost beat the Raptors. They were like. It's insanely close to beating the champs, you know? Dude, they were. It's insanely close. They, that game would have went to overtime. Like, who knows what happens, you know? They won a I agree. Crazy, lost in a crazy buzzer beater in game seven. I agree with that. They were right. beating the crap out of the Raptors in Philly in those games. They were, man. I, dude, the 76ers are a scary team to face, and they're so good at home. But that's not going to matter for this playoffs, but they're so good at home. Uh, all right, the last topic cluster I called miscellaneous. And the first one comes in from Card Shop Dad. He said, do you display any cards, grail or non-grails, around the house? If so, what's your preferred method? And if not, why not? No, absolutely not. Big time no-no. Uh, you know, I'm, I always freak out about light on them. That's why I only had the RPA out for a few seconds. Uh, I worry about light. Uh, degrading the card over time. I understand the desire maybe to show some cards off, but I... I get more uh, enjoyment out of bringing it out, you know, on like um, more random occasions and taking them out of their dark layers. <laughs> I agree. I like having them in a stack as well. Um, and like, I can only see one at a time and I got to thumb through them. Yeah. I like that. I, I like that too. Uh, and so I, I'm so scared about light exposure to cards because I know that surfaces fade. Um, you know, uh, and you know, I, I honestly, like if I walked into a room that had a bunch of cards display, I would be distracted constantly. What I wouldn't be able to do anything. I'd just be looking at the cards. So we got to control for that as well. Uh, 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 Midwest vintage cards says, what's your favorite companion piece in your collections? For example, I have a Chicago stadium chair or a ticket to the 1917 white Sox world series. Oh, nice. Uh, I have a autographed jersey of Anthony Hardaway. It's not like a game used jersey or anything. But it is a legit auto. It's got the sticker uh, to authenticate it. And then uh, I have my LeBron poster, which you can see in all my videos. I love that Chalk Toss poster. Uh, Grant Slayton, Waldorf Stories, bought me a LeBron towel today. Ah. Love that thing. Very uh, generous purchase from Mr. Slayton. Thank you. That's awesome. Shout out, Grant. That's all. Awesome. I have nothing. I have an in-person Luca autograph, but it's on a prism card. So, and I did keep the ticket stub from the game. Uh, but other than that, I'm just too obsessed with cards to spend a dime on anything else, to be honest. Amen to that. Uh, Northeast sports cards josh says who wins the nba championship this year not 
who do you want to win, but who will win? Uh, my vote is the Lakers. Uh, no comment. <laughs> Twoosh says, well, where do you store your cards then, Josh? Uh, various locations. I have different boxes depending on the value. I have a bank safe. I have other various hidden things. Very good. All right. Uh, Cardbohydrates says, I always wondered if game used jerseys were washed before being put into a, a card. <laughs> I have no idea. That's an interesting question. I think uh, I would hope not. I would. I would want it to be a no if it were me. I agree. Um, you know, it, if if it gets washed, it was still worn, but you know, you lose some of the the history of that item. I think a little bit. Um, You're right. Rick is right. He says I don't want to jinx it. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll do it for you. I the, the the Lakers, man. The way that that dude, that team has just just was assembled this year, and the way they were gelling by the end of the season, they knocked off all the best teams in convincing fashion. Now yeah, they, you know, the deck, the play. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the deck has been reshuffled now um, with this whole extended break, but I don't know, man. LeBron's hungry. I think the last dance got people fired up. I think people are thinking about their legacies. I don't know. I like I mean, the Lakers. I'm, I'm worried about them. They missed the playoffs last year. I just don't see it. All right. Uh, our friend Card Insights, great, great channel, or, uh, uh, or uh, a great um, Instagram account. He says, what do you really think about Jeff from Sports Card Investor? Tool or cool? <laughs> People are trying to get me in trouble tonight. Uh, Jeff has done a great job uh, building his community in such a short amount of time, and he's put out really high-quality content. Uh, you know, we obviously differ on some opinions on what types of cards to buy and what cards are good investments. Uh, but overall, I think what he's brought to the hobby has been positive, and, uh, you know, he's, he's brought more attention to the hobby with his high-quality YouTube content that nobody else is providing. Uh, so, yeah. I think he's been a positive. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I Jeff had me on his show when the last dance was going on to talk about Michael Jordan cards, and it sent like 500 subs maybe or 400, something like that, to our YouTube channel. So that was extremely generous. Um, you know, Jeff's the guy who will engage. He'll discuss topics with you. He'll listen to points of view. Uh, <laughs> you know, nobody can be right all the time on topics or predictions i'm certainly not uh so you know he's he he's a he represents a segment of the hobby that really exists and he has people who really like his content and they like what he does if it's not for you it's not for you so next question is uh jjj gambino um yeah, see, look, as I'm just scrolling the chat here, we've got a lot of different reactions to Jeff. Definitely a polarizing um, figure in the hobby. Uh, Witty Card Collection, says, that's an amazing question. Rock Nation Card says he's a good dude, honestly. Uh, round number 19 says Tool is decent advice blows. Witty says he's genuine, though. Round number says a very nice guy. Card Insights, what's up, guys? Love you guys' <laughs> content. Rock Nation says, hello, sports card investors. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. And uh, the Hustle Collector, we're not going to have time to get to all these here. We still have more. But the Hustle Collector says, collecting strategies. Maybe this is a good one for us to end on. Collecting strategies. What do you? How do you respond to the topic of collecting strategies? Uh, first, my first response is, uh, you should have a strategy for yourself. It's good to have a plan. Uh, I feel like anytime I get away from my plan is when I make the most mistakes and I buy things on a whim without doing my research, you know? So I always like to find something that I'm potentially going to go in and buy, on, buy something of and make sure I understand the card. I understand its comps. I understand the rarity, you know, maybe the history of the card, why people might like it. 
before I go buy something. And anytime I get away from that strategy or that plan is when things kind of go awry. Uh, as far as like what types of strategies there are, there's tons, right? Like uh, obviously it depends on if you're trying to like make money. So then your, you know, your strategies are grade and flip buying like uh, investment pieces for long term, or you're buying short term guys, rookie guys try to flip based on timing or maybe like seasonal flips based on sport um collecting strategies maybe you're trying to keep your money balanced and spending it wisely by uh, going after certain cards specifically making checklists of things you want to buy instead of trying to get everything bunch of strategies uh, i'm just rattling off here what do you got dude those i th that you hit dude that's so many good strategies there um i agree with those when i came back to the hobby i was a very 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 conservative collector like I was like, I'm doing Michael Jordan inserts and that's it because I know that this is what I love. I know there's other people out there who love those. And like, I'm literally not even going to look at modern cards. I'm not going to look at prospects. I'm not going to look at active players. I'm not going to look at new sets. I'm just, I have blinders on and I'm not even thinking about it. I can't even see them. Tunnel vision to the extreme. And because it, I, I was like, do people really take these types of risks with cards, with players, you know, who are young and have a future? And, and then my eyes have been completely opened to the fact that people love potential and they love to prospect. They love to speculate. It's a very, very robust market, much more robust in terms of its dynamics than the market for retired players. And so that means lots of high upside and lots of possibility to crash. And then like Christina said, then we started ripping wax. We found some prospects that we like, and now I understand it and I get it. Um, so, you know, collecting strategies, you know, I, I think you have to know yourself first and foremost, you need to know yourself, what you like, what you want to collect, what you want to get out of it, what you can deal with you know, what, 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 what level of risk are you willing to tolerate? And from there, um, you know, you can, you can, you know, there's, a, there's a million paths in front of you. If you want to mess with prospects, if you want to mess with high end, if you want to mess with low end, if you want to mess with retired goats, hall of famers, you know, there's so many places to get in where you fit in. Well said. So Doobie collects says, uh, my strategy is not to get into any more breaks. Nice. Good job, man. Good for you. Good job. Good luck. Uh, good luck. Um, Frankie says, focus on one thing at a time. Otherwise, yeah. you may go crazy. I like that. I mean, it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. So you don't have to get it all right away. You know, maybe you have one goal at a time or one set you're after. Or I really like that advice. One thing at a time has really worked well for me. When I hyper-focus on something, I learn a lot more about the card and I get a feel for it over time and I can sleep on it. Great advice. I agree. I think that is a good piece of advice, a good note to end on. What do you, what say you? We got one or two minutes. Yeah. Any, let's give some more card letter stuff. Maybe um, we are beta testing card letter right now. We've got some people testing it out, enjoying it. We've got over a thousand people signed up for the wait list in just a few days. Very exciting. People are excited. We're getting a lot of messages about it and keep messaging us guys. If you want to know more about it, Chris and I are very open to answer questions about it. Um, we've obviously been posting some screenshots of it with the compare tool. We're going to start doing some more of that using the tool. And I've told this to a lot of people already and that is that this tool is going to be uh, made by the community and it's for the community. And by that, I mean, if you guys have suggestions, something you'd like to see in the app, we obviously can't, uh, you know, have everything in the app. It's, we, we can't have every tool under the sun, but we, we would like it to be good and useful for everyone. So if you have some advice or some, something you'd like to see, uh, let me or Chris know or Christina and we will uh, see what we can do. We, we've already had like people give us suggestions and then we've had them implemented within hours in some cases. And we added a new feature today where you can search the ladder and you can filter down to specific years, players, sets. So that, that all came out just today. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming out. Uh, 
seemingly every day, right, Chris? 100%. What you said is correct. And I want to say thank you to everybody who has supported us, who has been a part of this. Like, like Josh said, we have over a thousand people who signed up for a wait list, which is unbelievable and super exciting. I just try to keep an even keel, but I'm very, very excited about this. This is some Josh and I are passionate about. We love the hobby. Feels great to be able to make this type of contribution. Game changing. That's the phrase, my friend. And everyone wants to know about price, and we have been talking about price, and we're we're going to keep the price low. So uh, stay optimistic about that. I'm not going to screw anyone. We're going to try to keep it as low as we can while also making it beneficial to Chris and I for all of our hard work. we got 10 seconds. Any last thoughts? Well said, my friend. This has been The Crossover. See you guys next week. See ya. The future is here. An innovation that will change the way the industry works. A Hot 100 chart. Updated date. The most accurate price guide on the market. Every card has its own profile with a wealth of information. Know the precise real-time value of any card in the system. On demand. Now have the power to unlock the secrets of the hobby. The game changer is here. Card ladder. <laughs>